Well, they won at least. Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and I'm here to talk about game 78 of the regular season where the Astros mercifully win not only to salvage a game out of the series, but to finally get a extra inning win on the season. It is late June, folks, but that is not that we're not going to... We're going to be happy that they won, or at least try to be, until we get to a certain ending of this game, and then we're going to be not that happy. The game's story arc is simple. Starts off bad. Mookie bets with a leadoff home run. He got robbed of one yesterday. This time he was not. He puts him up one nothing, and you think, oh boy, here it comes again. Hunter Brown's going to pitch poorly again in a back-to-back -back start, because for some reason, despite the fact that he has like a sub two and a half ERA with Yiner Diaz behind the plate, Dusty Baker continues to put Maldonado in, and uh, there's so much to talk about tonight with Dusty Baker. The Maldonado thing still gets me. He has a sub 5'5", five five or 550 OPS. He went over again tonight. He was allowed to hit in the ninth inning with two outs. I, I don't understand how you can continue to trot out Martin Maldonado. And it's not even at a point now where you can say, oh, well, he calls great game. His game calling has been highly suspect this year. The defensive numbers that were just barely making him hang on are completely gone out the window. And while I'm picking the scabs of, you know, the lineup, Altuve and Diaz weren't in this game. And they weren't even brought in as pinch hitters. And I just don't understand the reasoning. This isn't the dog days. Of, it's not August. It's not September resting up for the play. You need to win games. Like, you legitimately need to win games. You need to feel good about yourselves. And you're just not. And I don't feel the lineup on a nightly basis is giving them that chance to go out and consistently win. I, the lineup decisions have been horrific. You finally get McCormick back in after he was benched for, what, back-to-back -back games? I, I don't... I just don't understand the lineup, man. But the offense doesn't fold. Jeremy Pena, second inning, two-run home run. Nito Spaghetto. Then in the fourth inning, Jose Abreu, who, please, love of God, heat up, Jose Abreu. We need you real bad. Homers, two-run shot. The Astros have a 4-1 lead over the Dodgers, and you feel pretty darn good about yourselves. Hunter Brown, after a very bad first inning because of the home run, completely just locks it down. Six innings of one run ball, seven strikeouts, two walks, only five hard hit balls. He locked it down. He looked great. Maton comes in and atones for his sins of yesterday with a simple inning. Picks up a strikeout. No hard contact. Cool. Eighth inning. The Astros have a three run lead. And in comes Rafael Montero. Listen, last game is not on Dusty Baker. You bring in Maton. And he gives up a two-run shot. Who could see that coming? You bring in Abreu, and he gives up a two-run shot. Who could see that coming? Your two best relievers very, 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 very rarely will both give up multi-run home runs in back-to-back -back innings late in the game. That doesn't happen. Now, bringing in Rafael Montero in this situation was just bad. It, it was just bad. They brought him into a game not long ago with a three-run lead, and he almost choked it up. I am, this is the most brutal thing I have said on this channel. And I'm always very careful with how I phrase things. Because I understand that if I were to stand in a batter's box against Rafael Montero, and he were to throw me a hundred pitches, I wouldn't make contact with any of them. And if I did, it would have just been sheer luck because I closed my eyes and tried to swing. So I say that to make sure you understand. I'm not just some angry uncle who's seven beers into a night screaming that every player sucks. I don't think you can roster Rafael Montero on this team anymore. I just, I don't, he gave up three runs in two thirds of an inning in a game where they desperately needed him to lock it down. I, it's, it's done. And I know a lot of people are saying DFA him, and I understand that because he has not been good. You are in late June. You are almost in July. By the time he gets another start or another game, it's very, very possible that he could enter July with a over 8 ERA. It's 7.76 seven, right now. But an, a, an 8 or above is on the table.
if he has another bad game like this. Home run, two hard hit balls, RBI double. You you can't continue to have him on this roster. I people will pick on Seth Martinez to an extent, and that he is not a great pitcher. Dude, it's still it's four six. And at least I've seen something from Seth Martinez this season. It sucks because I like Montero and he was a massive part of the team last year, regular season and especially postseason. Right? He earned that ring last season. And he earned the contract with his play last season. But right now, he is not anywhere close to that. And I'm not necessarily saying DFA him because there is a legitimately good pitcher buried within him. And we saw that last year. Did he, uh, did he punch a little bit above his expected numbers? Yes, it was not to this degree. Nowhere near this degree. It wasn't that he had an ERA of two and an expected of eight. It was, like, what, a half a run of difference? It was not this. You know it's in there. You know that dog is still in there. Triple A. Double A. Let him go beat up on weak opponents for a couple of weeks, a month, and then bring him back up. Because if you DFA him, you're losing so much money that you're just cutting completely. And it would just hurt my soul to see him go somewhere else and succeed after a stint in the minors. But you can't continue to roster him on this team right now. Send him, to, send him down, let him build up some confidence, let him find his juju again, and then bring him back up. But to the people that are on that DFA train... I don't have a valid argument to say, no, you should keep him on the roster. I just have that sliver of hope of just don't completely cut ties. Maybe just demote him temporarily. So Nearest picks up a strikeout, finishing Montero's inning. Presley comes in for the ninth and 10th and looked good. I was perfectly fine with Ryan Presley. Hopefully he can start to get back on track. That would be ideal if your elite talent in the bullpen pitched like elite talent in a bullpen. Astros in the 10th inning take a 5-4 lead with a Corey Jolk single, but then a Mookie Betts sack fly ties it back up in the bottom of the 10th. Alex Bregman, 11th inning, RBI base hit, and that would be it. Seth Martinez comes in in the 11th, and finally in extra innings, he gets rewarded for pitching well, and the Astros, again, nearly halfway through the season, finally get a win in extra innings. So, was it a pretty win? No. Was it a confidence-inspiring win? Also, no. But was it a win? Just barely. But just barely is enough right now because the Astros just desperately need to win games and feel kind of good about themselves. They have an off day tomorrow to rest up before they start a three-game set in St. Louis against the Cardinals. First game is 745 Eastern, 645 Central on Tuesday night. The Astros will send Framber Valdez to the mound. The Cardinals have not announced their starter yet, but I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. As for right now, that is all I have to say. If you enjoyed the video, please consider to like and subscribe. Thank you all so very much for watching, and as always, Ghost Rose.